G'day and welcome to the Mallee Tiger Podcast. My name's Bree and we are back in the studio again for a third week. Everyone pat yourself on the back. Do it. How come I'm the only one doing it? That's I'm your shoulder. T- oh, I don't want to lift my arm up. I don't want to lift my arm up either. Let's make a <laughs> stance. Oh, uh, I should have stretched. I, uh, we have Jord. <laughs> Hello. And Josh. Hi. And if you're unaware, we are siblings. Because mm-hmm. I think there was a bit of discord about how do we know each other. Was there? No. We met. <laughs> <laughs> we met in a fire. <laughs> we all used to be roommates. Ro- I, I just can hear the guy in the background going, we already knew. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, Today we are bringing it again, another article or something that piqued our interest. I've got a good one for you. It's already going to be bad now because you've talked it up. You should have... Well, do you want me to go first or do you guys... You might as well. You just sounds like you want it. Okay. Well, mine is actually... We were talking last week about what makes you a cryptozoologist. So I have a cryptozoologist quiz for both of you. And whoever wins it is the... Default Mellow Tiger Crypto. But I already hold the license. What if no, I just refuse to do it? No, the well, then you'll get it fucking removed. We will Shit. revoke your license. You're looking very nervous. I am very nervous. Like it means I had it though personally. for like. <laughs> no. He wins. I haven't yeah, won a no, quiz yet. Yeah, there's no. Can I tell you? It's rigged. I, think you I haven't won one. This no. Dad beat you in that one. This quiz is extremely. <laughs> 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 yeah, you did. The, what am I going to do with a fucking mirror? <laughs> I remember that. This quiz. Again, he's not, but I'm going to keep poking. This quiz is um extremely difficult. Oh, well, I, I don't even do easy mode well. It's not. I did it and I failed. I think I got four out of ten. Oh, I guess nobody can do it then. I'm just trying <laughs> to show you the level of which it is. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm. So whoever wins, and there will be no complaining, is now the podcast head cryptozoologist. Head? Just wanted to be a cryptozoologist. No, so well then the... you, just, you just get to be a crypt. And if you lose, you don't so get to pressure. be. And you won't, and we get this, you get to apply once a year and you have to take the quiz once a year. That's to actually pretty cool. In a year, we have to do this Can we again. make it six months? A, a year's a long way. time without Mm-mm. it. A year. I mean, I'm going to win it. <laughs> 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 in the world. How about let's wait and see if you win or not. And yeah, then we'll go for it. Yeah. It's difficult. Are you ready? No rematches. <laughs> it's, it's multiple choice. Oh, thank God. Question number one. It might well be the most famous of monsters. Be this beast reported, no. This beast reportedly lurks in the depths of Scotland's Loch Ness. Loch Ness monster. When and by who was the first sighting of Nessie? Coughwood? <laughs> look at your face. Look, you must wait a minute. <laughs> a. Was it Bigfoot? Oh, no, okay. A. Arthur Grant, 1812. B. Colonel Robert Wilson, 1932. C. St. Columba, 565 AD. Or. What? A, B, C, D. E, <laughs> A, B, C, D. Dude, that's what I was looking for. D. This is a really hard one. Yeah. Is that one of those dick jokes? Like D. Yeah, no. I got it here for you. <laughs> Vitamin D. D. Father Gregory Bruson in 1651. Father Gregory D. I'm going. No, it's either A or B. Arthur Grant, Colonel Robinson, Wilson. You can't have B. Both. I'll go B. So you went A? B. You went B. Josh went A. A. Was a year in B? No, you went D. No, D. D, you went D. Father. No, whatever the priest fella in yeah. 1600s. What year was the B? 19, early 1900s? 1800s or something. I can go. It was Colonel Robertson Wilson in 1932. Oh, that's too early. St. Columba in fi- 565 AD or Father Gregory Bruson in 1651. Is that too early? George went B for Colonel Robert Wilson in 1932. There's oh, also would an be Arthur a Colonel though. He'd be like, kill the thing I there's saw. There's an Arthur Grant in 1812. Well, it's in 1812. That, yeah, so that's A. Oh, go A, please. I'm going off here. If it's the father one. Two. Strange beasts are said to lurk within the Jiwandu swamps of Zambia. Bigfoot. <laughs> 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 Bigfoot. Known as Kongamato. They resemble what type of creatures? Pterosaurs, pandas, brontosaurs, or saber-toothed what tigers? What are their names? A. A, pterosaurs, <clears throat> B, pandas, C, brontosaurs, or D, saber-toothed what tigers. What were they called, though? They are called congomato. A, it's got to be the pterosaurs. Pterosaurs, you both go on A. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I actually read that yeah, me too. in a book. I'm just reading his vibes. That's the one, yeah. Because you have a book in your house. I have books. 
read the back. <laughs> in 1920, this is question number three. In 1920, Stan Bergman discovered the skin of a bear much bigger than any in the area. He dubbed the bear Ursus Arctos Piscator. In which part of the world did Bergman find his skin? A. Kamchatka. B. Sierra Nevada. C. Tibet. Or D. Nova Scotia. Nevada, because Tibet you're just... Tibet or Nova Scotia? No, it's got to be, like, an easier... It's oh. Tibet. I'm going to go Tibet. You're going to see Tibet? Yeah. What was A again? Kamchatka. I don't even know what I don't know is. what that <laughs> I think I had that last night from <laughs> Chinese <laughs> restaurant. What, what year did you say? 1920. I'm going to go D. Tibet as well. No, 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 no sorry. Uh, C was... Oh, sorry, C. D is Nova Scotia. Yeah, D, D. D then. Yeah, Nova Scotia. Four. <laughs> You're all over the fucking shop. That's my plan. <laughs> if you don't know where I am. I mean, if I don't know where I am, you don't know where I am. Four. A giant humanoid is said to live in the Australian bush. Known to the Aborigines. Bigfoot. <laughs> known to the Aborigines. If you keep fucking saying that, I'm going to deduct a point if you have any. Oh, well, shit. I need to concentrate then. Known to the Aborigines for thousands of years. First reports by Europeans <laughs> date back to the early 1800s. You can't answer. He forfeits this question. <laughs> <laughs> Please say something if you don't wish to forfeit. <laughs> Sounds like someone picked D. <laughs> <laughs> a giant humanoid is said to live in the Australian bush. Known to the Aborigines by thousands for thousands of years, first reports by Europeans date back to the early 1800s. What is the creature commonly known as? A. Howler. B. Bunyip. C. Yowie. Or D. Swaggy. Bunyip and Yowie is... Was that what the Aboriginals called it? Or is that what we call it? You, we can't. He cannot discuss with your competitor. I'm talking to myself. Okay. Well, looking that direction. <laughs> You're like looking huh? past. Right? <laughs> what do you want, Bunyip or Yowie? <laughs> Which one? <are> you <laughs> scissors. No, but that's what. The, are you saying what the Aboriginals called it? Yes. Back in, uh, well, they would. No, 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 no. Known for thousands. It was already known to Aboriginals. Um, the European. What? It, it just what's it commonly known as? I would. It's one of the bunny boy, yeah. I cannot fucking... I oh, know you can't. I cannot I'm tired. fucking believe you sat across from me last week and was like, hey, yeah, we, I can be a cryptozoologist. Yeah, no, but um, this is my And thing. this is what you're caught up on. This yeah. is Australia, I didn't do Australian. Australian no, I don't, cryptid over, culture. No, I can abroad. tell this means a lot more to you than to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm abroad. What are you going to choose? I'm going to go... Fuck. Kick him first? No, he's already given me his <laughs> answer and I'm not right. telling you what he said. Do you know what it is? Yes. I don't remember what you said. I'm going to go... See, do you know what, Josh? What? I feel like you you were. This is getting you more nervous than like fucking any exam you did at school. At school, you're just like. Bip, 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 bip. <laughs> this yeah, but I didn't no get nervous looking. at school though because um, you couldn't. Mum just wanted to go home. Mum pat me on the back anyway and told me she loved me. She's like, do you know what, Josh? As long as you try, that's all we ask. <laughs> yeah. And goes the other room. I heard her talking today. Going, what the fucking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have dropped him on his head as a baby. You dropped him on his head. We both did. <laughs> She's like, you should have finished the job. Oh, that's, too far, that's is it? so sad. But itself. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's okay fine. then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can make that joke. <laughs> Question five. In the deepest, darkest Africa, in deep, yeah, the, look, let me be honest, the spelling on this quiz isn't great. In the deepest, darkest Africa lies a lake. Isolated and untouched, the locals say it is home of Mokili Mbambe. Descriptions of the beast suggest it may be a survivor from the age of the dinosaurs. What is the name of the lake in which Mokili Mbambe lives? A, Lake Victoria, B, Lake Telly, C, Lake Albert, or D, Lake Kalanga? Like, uh, B. A. You seem pretty confident there, Josh. Because Telly. What does that mean? I ain't telling you. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. You went Victoria because the British went over there and conquered a bit of it and named the lake after their coin. Do you mean, yeah, I love how you like, and, like conquered it, I'm like... Colonized, <laughs> whichever just, word yeah, just, just ruin the yeah, land, just destroy them. <laughs> I'm gonna take all your gemstones, and I ain't giving them back. Never. This is what you <laughs> get in return. Yeah, pretty much. Six. Off the coast of British Columbia dwells a creature named Cadborosaurus Wilsey or Caddy. It is described as a long, flippered serpent. The head of Caddy, Caddy, doesn't resemble a serpent, but another creature. Which one? A. Dog. B. Horse. C. Pig. Or D. Duck. Wait, wait. B. B. What was that one? Stop copying him. No, I don't want to get that one. I just want to forget. I oh, know Duck B, was the last horse. one. Horse. So A, yeah. dog. B, horse. C, pig. D, duck. It's duck or horse. Well, of course you choose a duck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can we fuck it? It's, it's B. B. It's the nay. It's not a dog or. 
Imagine if it was a pig. Yeah, little truck just come out. <laughs> 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 it was a monocle for some reason. What? <laughs> 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 Seven. Alaska's Lake Iliama. Iliamna is report, pu- reportedly home for a species of giant fish which grows to 30 feet in length. That's a whale. Though there <laughs> has been numerous sightings. Sperm. Wow. <laughs> I'll pause. No hard evidence has been obtained. The most popular explanation for these creatures is that they are a species of what? A. Sturgeon. B. Salmon. C. Dolphin. D. Seal. Uh, a. Yeah. Sturgeon. Okay, a. What is a sturgeon? <clears throat> Sturgeon's a big a fish. Big fish. <laughs> a big fish well, over that in America. That makes sense, doesn't it, then? Yeah, it's like a long, um, not skinny, but like a long fish. Like a garfish? Not like fish? a fat, though. Like a, no, like a sardine, kinda, but not, but not bigger. Wa- not like um, wavy. I love how we always explain, I was like, just Google it. Yeah, I'm like, no, yeah. tell me more. Josh, Josh draws me a picture like this. <laughs> <laughs> Eight, Native Africans tell of a water serpent that haunts the swamps of the Nile. Larger by far than the largest python, it is said to take both cattle and men as prey. You thought with a snorkel on? You're getting a yeah, point, point to talk. No, yeah. sorry. I didn't. Oh, look at that. That's, I'll still win. I don't fuck around. I'll still win. <laughs> okay. Um, you you really <laughs> see saw <don't> you? <laughs> yeah. The confidence just oozes out of you, and then the next minute like, you have no idea. Yeah. I like um, the underdog, so now I'm like full of confidence. Because if I lose, I could be like, "Ah, oh, because she took the point." <laughs> Give me a point back. <laughs> I, could, I could lose by five and still get asked to the point. I'd yeah. be able to watch. <laughs> Just like if I didn't have that point, lost. Yeah. Josh, you lost by five. If that goddamn point was. So now done. the confidence is radiating. So what do they call this water serpent? A. Lulu. B. Pondapore. C. Grenel. Or D. Lau. D. I have n- really no idea. None of us have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like whatever. You just say the first letter that pops into your head. Whatever's like, be. whatever's like, whatever's, be. whatever's familiar, like suits it. I reckon. Okay, hey, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Lou. <laughs> Let's go. Number nine. The nomads of Mongolia tell of an unusual beastie that lives amongst the desolation of the Gobi Desert. The Olgoi Kokor. Fuck me. The Olgoi Kokor. Cor- Are we going to have another no. short here? <laughs> Are we getting another short? I, it, it, it makes my brain just reboot. Olgoi Korkoi is feared by the locals for its reputa- reportable ability to kill at a distance. The Olgoi Korkoi most resembles what kind of creature? A. Worm. B. Frog. C. Cat. D. Spider. From a distance. Mm. Well, just what does it a. resemble? I'm going to go B. A for George. Frog. B for Josh. What was that again? What's in your pants? A worm. A little worm. <laughs> a little worm, my boy. Put that wide out, little. <laughs> let's, that, let's that birdie swoop down. I think he's got a meal on his hands. He's like, where to go? But, I already ate it. But I, I assure didn't. you, he still be hungry afterwards. <laughs> Where's the rest of your family? Some of the shit I picture in my mind when that happens is just bird eating my dick. <laughs> Gone. Got a little switchblade. Where do I your friends at? <laughs> Give me a wallet, boy. <laughs> like, haven't you taken enough of my dignity? <laughs> dignity. <laughs> now, number 10. Now you know, and I know that this quiz wouldn't be complete without a Bigfoot question. But might as well. Actually, not playing. Do you oh. want it? You yeah, go. So here you go. One of the theories on Bigfoot suggests it could be related to which extinct creature? A, T-Rex. <laughs> pro- don't laugh though, it's probably that. <laughs> B, Gigantopithecus. C, Yeti Kenosaurus. Or D, Diplodocus. <laughs> I feel Kenosaurus. like you made Yeti Kenosaurus up. Yeah, I didn't do this quiz, I found B. it online. It's B. Yeah, B. It's not the other Wait, one. You look at John Yeti. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not T-Rex, it's not Yeti Kenosaurus. Like someone just put it in their ass. Yeti Canosaurus. Yeah. I love Josh. George answers and Josh goes, Yeah, B. Yeah, B. Yeah, B. What he B. said. Of course he is. Look at Yeah, B. I nearly beat you. <laughs> okay. Now it's asking for my email address. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, I don't even care. I abandoned that so quickly. I'll get my ticket. It's laminated and everything. Okay. So question number one. It's like a library card. <laughs> Your butts and burn a license. <laughs> You burn it with the Bunsen burner. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember you used to have to get a pen license? So uh, degrading. Like yeah. you never actually got anything. You're like you? 14 years old. You can use a pen. Oh God, what would have happened if yeah. I didn't have this license? Hey, stop that kid. He's got a pen. He's <laughs> <laughs> stop it, tackling. Remember what? It, 
<laughs> the, simp- the simple term is term is running right. Yeah. What's what's the actual term? Fast riding, like riding in that form. Oh, like squiggly. Yeah. Like <laughs> so you think actually it wasn't the most <laughs> standard form. It's not like calligraphy. What is it? It's called um. It's some yeah. yeah. Um, Squig- squiggly, boop. squiggly, <laughs> squiggly, squiggly, <boop. laughs> but remember, you had to do that to get your license, yeah. and then as soon as you went to high school, they're like, Don't do that, yeah. That was just like page up. I can't read your writing, yeah. yeah. It's so dumb. It's kind of like I think that's really outdated now. I don't think they make kids learn how to write in it's running, it's more productive to run right. Kids faster. don't write anymore, do they? they I think they just, they just got the like laptops computers and, shit. and shit, yeah. But I, right. that used to be so Bad. Do, I, Mo, do Mo and Izzy have, yeah, like, computer, uh, like yeah, school no. laptops? I think they might be getting them, but not now. I don't think, no, um. Izzy keeps sending me messages on Messenger, kids' messages, and it cracks me up because she'll go, hi, Brie, and then I'll write back like a half hour later. I'll go, hi, Izzy, and I think she's looking at it thinking I've messaged her out of nowhere, and she goes, hi, Brie. <laughs> I go, hi, Izzy, and she writes back, oh, hi, Brie. Like, that's what it's like. Like She gets confused and thinks I've messaged her first, and she's replying to me. I think me it's because she's yeah. also six and doesn't really know how to spell I it. Think it's <laughs> so she just only knows hi, Brie. She sends me emo- <laughs> emojis, but I thought it was so funny. I'm like, why does she keep saying that back? And I'm like, oh, she's forgotten that she sent me that message ages ago, and she's opened a message that just says hi, Izzy. Yeah. So she's like, oh, hi, Brie. She'd be like that, yeah. <laughs> it's like back and forth. So <laughs> you're, so you're just like, yeah, she's yeah, like me. That's true. We just have this message thread of her saying hi, Brie, and me saying hi, Izzy, and then her drawing like a pumpkin and saying, what is this? <laughs> and me got a pumpkin and she'll send me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and then secretly you get real proud. You're just yeah. like, Fuck yeah, yeah I, was, I passed it. Yeah. I was just like, I'm winning this shit. Speaking about passing it, here okay. we go. Here we go. Back on track, ladies and gentlemen. Lately, my um, iPad hasn't been recognizing my face. And I'm like, and sometimes I get really worried when I go to log into mum's iPad, it's got face recognition. I was and like, if you, mother, you if you fucking <laughs> recognize let you in. I'd cry. I'd be like, that is that is so obscene. <laughs> but that's what I'm getting at. I'm like, it's like, we don't recognize you. And I was like, I've had this iPad for only like four years, five years. Please don't say that to me. Why do you have face recognition on? Oh, because I don't want to touch it with my fingers. I don't know. It's just easier. Because when I look at it's it, it's bagging out people who don't write just, pens. No, it's just when I look at it, it opens. But I don't do facial recognition on this or finger. I do fingerprint because I'm worried that someone will get a photo of me and then hold my phone up to it. To get into the oh, phone. Uh, does that work? Like if you hold it? Yes, I think I did it with Lucy once and it did work. I took a photo of her, then held it up to her phone and it let me in her phone. Okay. But then I'm like, if I'm, yeah, and then so I'm like, so they won't be able to get in if I'm like dead or something. But then I do have fingerprints. So <laughs> well, who, who's <laughs> killing me to get him a fucking phone the though? Like, what's in there. They're chopping her thumb Nothing. off. And she's like, fuck. <laughs> I'll just put Face it recognition would have been way better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So question one, who discovered Loch Ness Monster? Who first saw it? Josh answered... Whatever the 1812 one was. Yep. The correct answer was St. Columba, 565 AD. So we both saw it. I don't think you we even got it wrong. That's ages ago. Yeah, that's a while. I was, su- I was also surprised by that when I did the quiz. I did not do well on this quiz, I will say. So you both did not get that. Thanks. So number two, the strange beasts that lurk within the Giwanda swamps of Zambia, known as the Congamado. They are... Pterosaurs. Yes. So you got that right. I'm pretty sure when we done our Thunderbird episode, I brought it up, but it's uh, the one. I think you did, yeah. It's the one that swooped down at a canoe. There was like three dudes in a canoe and it swooped down and started pulling them all apart. <laughs> what the fuck? It's messed yeah. up. They, it, said, it says in... Um, it's not, a magpie. <laughs> so the answer says in 1932, uh, Ivan Sanderson was attacked by a congamato coming straight at me. Only a few feet above the water was a black thing the size of an eagle. I had only a glimpse of its face, yet for this, yet that was sufficient for its lower jaw hung open and bore a semicircle of pointed white teeth. So maybe that was it because he said I above think the I, water. Yeah, I think that was it. Number three. Well, this is different. This is where it's in nineteen twenty become, boys become men. Sorry, yep. you keep talking. I'm also talking. Go. <laughs> Minus one point. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> in 1920, Stan Bergman discovered the skin of a bear, much bigger. What area did he mm. discover it in? You were both wrong. It was in Kamchatka. I thought about that. But I thought I'm that like, was a made-up place. Made up. It just sounded so... Where yeah. is well, Kamchatka? Do you know choose where that it? is? You, can you Google it? <laughs> I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> let me go. Let me Google it. Let me use my little kids. Yeah, go on. Use your, use I don't your know how to open it. <laughs> oh my God. I'm on to it. Let me see if I can do it quicker. Okay. <laughs> Found it. It is. Oh, you can stop now. I found it. Did you really? That no, was pretty good. Cool. Cool. <laughs> that was pretty fucking. You fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Damn it. Uh, P- 
Peninsula in Russia. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. If you knew that, you probably have selected it. <laughs> yeah. If I knew it was in Russia, yeah. So the only other evidence of the bear's existence were huge tracks. One theory suggests that Bergman's bear is a surviving link to Arct- Arctodus simus, a prehistoric bear which stood six feet at the shoulder. Imagine that the big That's and terrifying of ours. They're already scary enough. On all fours at mm-hmm. six foot. That's as tall as you are. He's six five technically. Well, on all fours, yeah. No, I'm a little bit big at all. On all fours. Are you on all fours or the no, bear you said on all fours? Because <laughs> <Bear. laughs> like, I was thinking when you said six foot, and I'm like, that's not very tall for a bear standing up, but you said no, on all fours. fours yeah. yeah. That's pretty He'd sneeze, up. you'd die. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Just falls over dead. So neither of you got that either. See, she wasn't easy, was she? That is number four. Wait, that was number three. All right, number four. Uh, this X still This counts. is the Australian one. It's commonly known as Yowie. Yes. I nearly went Bunyip too, just to throw a spin in the works. But no. Dan was doing that. I did the quiz for him because he has no idea. He got better than me because he just selected random shit because yeah. he had no yeah. idea. But he's like, isn't it a Bunyip? Yeah, Bunyip and Yowie are the same thing. I'm like, they're completely different things. I used to think they were the same thing too, but yeah, they're not. definitely not. Wait, they're different? Bunyip's like yeah. a, it's like a water. Yeah, it lives cryptid. close to That's water. Cute. You should watch, I think it's called Red Billabong or something. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I have. It's it's to do with a Bunyip. Yeah. It's an Australian movie. A horror one. Yeah, it's, it's not Red? terrible. Yeah. yeah, I think it's called Red Billabong. You sure it's, not ter- it's terrible? A bunyip gunner and killing people? It's a recent movie. It's not like a... Oh, no, like the fact that people die is terrible. Yeah. Is that what you're like, my humanity or something? No, I what mean, just like, mean? A, this, a bunyip horror movie just sounds absolutely horrible. It's actually not bad. Right. It wasn't as bad as I thought it could. It's not as bad as it could be. It's, I'm not saying I don't believe fine. that. fine. Just, just check it out. Deduct him another point. It's yeah, been an I asshole. reckon too, George. I'll still win. I've got a three... You're heads. tied at the moment. Yeah, but it's about to be, mate. You both only have two. <laughs> I can hear the Josh, dam cracking. Here's the confidence you, again. The dam's cracking. <laughs> you both only have two points, and you're currently sitting at negative three points for like tech fouls, basically. <laughs> <I'm> coming back. <laughs> <laughs> you need all the help you can get. No, I'm so negative you, one with two points. <laughs> you want to fucking keep arguing with me? <laughs> no, I'm not arguing. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> Give me another one. <laughs> I don't even care. Now your quiz is invalid. <laughs> So just a point tally, George, you're on two points. George, you're on negative four. <laughs> no, I'm not. Negative oh, wait, two, because I got two. two. That's right. Are you still arguing? <laughs> Minus one. You just throw a more in and get me a negative four. You've got like negative five. Two negatives make a positive. You get, you get more take points taken off you than there are questions. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, in the deepest, darkest Africa lies a lake. This was the one that Mokili Mbembe lives it's in. Telly. It's Lake Telly. Fuck, oh, Jordan, you got that wrong. This is rigged. Josh got it right. I knew it was telly, mate, from the get-go. But you're still on yeah. negative five, no. so Jordan's still in <laughs> it. A number of expeditions have sought out Mokili Mbembe. To date, success has been thwarted by the lake's isolation, the hostility of the native people, and a shyness on the part of the beast itself. So for the story of this, um, they of the expedition, they recommend Drums Along the Congo by Rory Nugent. Which sounds interesting. Number six... <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Good gorilla. Good this is the gorilla. Congo one. The Congo. Coca. Yeah. Who is Coca? Yeah. <laughs> Amy. Amy. <laughs> yes. Bad gorilla. Go away. Yeah. Go away. It's a gorilla with the hands. <laughs> Starts going, um, Tommy, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no one knows what yeah, we're talking if, about. If you haven't seen the movie Congo, see it. It's, it's pretty cool. good. So number six, off the coast of British Columbia dwells a creature named Cadbrosaurus Wilsey or Caddy. And what does its head look like? I'm confident it's a horse head in this one. It is a, indeed a horse head. So George's on three points. Josh is on negative one. He knows. He, <laughs> he sees it. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> the real score. So the next one was that big ass fish. Sturgeon. It is a sturgeon. George's on four. Josh is on negative. We're actually doing pretty good. I thought, Josh she, said on this zero. Was, I thought she said this was hard. It was mm, hard. Yeah. Mm. Pretty easy. Remember that place that we didn't know what the fuck it was? <laughs> yeah. It? yeah, that's just an odd. That's an oddity. That's a, that's <laughs> you can't say for sure. You knew. You maybe knew, oh, mate, knew, knew. knew two of these questions. You know what I mean? The rest yeah. were like educated guesses. So the water serpent that haunts the swamps of the Nile is the Lao. That was you. Uh, why are you surprised? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is on one point. George's on four. I'm gunning you down, man. <laughs> the nomads of Mongolia tell of an unusual beastie that lives amongst the desolation of the Gobi Desert. It was a worm. Oh, did you say it? Yeah, I did. Oh, nice. Josh did not. <laughs> That's the worst all night ever. You just like, oh, nice. <laughs> Josh is good for you. I'm so happy for you. 
So number ten is the Bigfoot. What is he commonly related? What is it thought that he's It'll related to? It'll be a T-Rex. It's be something stupid. Okay. It is a Gigantopithecus. Yeah. So you both got that right. So that brings the score to George has six, Josh has seven, minus we, five. I think we know who won. Is two. So with the score and uh, what do you call it? Like a a, a um amended score. <laughs> Because you have to take into account the five negative <laughs> points you got. <laughs> <laughs> or we can just take into account that one true negative. Nah, we'll just... Or we could just give him back his license because I don't just care. Because like, yeah. <laughs> he's, <not, laughs> he's not getting it off me anyway. So who's Over gonna my cr- dead body. Who's going to cry in their car on about this on the way home? Yeah. <laughs> Josh, <laughs> Josh, I coin you the crypto zoologist of the podcast. And now you have to answer all our questions about Mm -hmm. crypto. I'll answer them, but I can't say I'll answer them correctly. (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to make you a little license. We can put it up behind you. Can we make it left? Just like that ribbon. How how much did he get? Seven out of ten. He got seven out of ten and you got six out of ten. That's a pretty good score. That's still pretty good. You have to answer a 70% success rate. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. Do you know what I heard about the other day, which absolutely blew my mind? You know when you look at weather, like like the chance of it raining? That's actually not like, it's not like a 30% chance of rain, right? It's an actual equation that they do based on the chance of rain, like the chance of particip- precipitation and the area of where it could rain, like a, the chance of it raining in that, how much of the area it is reporting on will get rained on. Mm-hmm. So they do like an equation based on that. I thought I heard that because you're always like 30%, you think it's a 30% chance Yeah, of but that's raining. not what it is. It's like 30% chance of... Um, rain is based on the chance of it actually raining and how much of the area it's reporting on, like your postcode or whatever, will get that 30% chance of rain. Oh, so it can be spread out. I can do it over the mountain and it's still 30%. Yeah, so if it's like there's an 80% chance of rain in 40% of the area they're reporting and it gives you like a 30% chance of rain or yeah, something. Yeah, right, I didn't know that. Some spe- I, I know, I thought that was really interesting because and now I'm going to stop swearing at the weather people because I'm like, 90 percent chance of rain, didn't get a drop. I thought they just went, she gone rain. Oh, they get this. If it does so, it, oh well. <laughs> there's always tomorrow. Let me lick my percentage finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's like Vikings, that dude in the hut where they always go and visit and you gotta lick his hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yes, yeah, rain. Yes. <laughs> That's how they do Lots it. Lots of rain. What do you guys have? You wanna go? Yeah, you wanna you go? Finish on yours. Look at Josh's new Check Lenovo, everybody. Mm. Sits up nice and strong. I don't have to turn it on. <laughs> I'm a cryptozoology, not a tech nerd. <laughs> I don't know which is worse. Okay, we're, we're, we're back. We just use a lemon So you remember how you, you've got to keep an eye on... Is that my job? Are you looking at it? Well, I, don't, I can't see it. It's probably more George's job, really, to be honest. Where were you on that one? Dipshit. Dipshit. <laughs> I don't know the rules. <laughs> we just realised that we weren't recording. Our disc f- was full, and as they say, if you run a big operation, these things are going to happen sometimes. Mm. Well, we're not blaming anyone. Jordan. It's his new job. It's his job. He only found out after. After the fact, yeah, but... We happened. love blaming people after things happen. <laughs> yeah. Let's not fix the issue. Let's just find out <laughs> whose fault it was. Yeah. And demonize point them. Point fingers. We love pointing fingers around here. <laughs> Wait, this isn't the a Spider Man one. This isn't a mind side. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna hear from Josh now. You've got. You want to tell us about Jenny? Wales. Do I can Wales off back to that? So, uh, I was gonna cut that whole section out. Well, now you have to do this one. Edit. I'm just gonna say it every minute, so you know. <laughs> <coughs> so back from the start. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, back to ghost ships. Mm-hmm. So a ghost ship by the name of Jenny, so the schooner Jenny, had disappeared and was missing for around 20 years before it was found. Mm -hmm. So upon finding the ship, the crew were apparently found still standing frozen solid on the main deck. So which sounds crazy to me, like especially 20 years later. Was it like they were mid-conversation or something or they were just standing? Yeah, two of them were like shaking hands. Really? No. (laughs) <laughs> Probably, I don't Why do you know. ruin this for us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just say yes, no, but um, I don't know. I don't, I didn't have details on what things was like doing that. The Macarena. But, it was, but they said it was almost like they were like an attention, like they were actually moving around, not mm. moving around, but they were standing there like they were. It looking was, at something. Yeah, looking at something or doing whatever people on ships do, you know, not eating lemons. Not expecting to be frozen solid to yeah, the top Yeah, exactly, deck. yeah. Mm. So um, according to a German magazine back in 1862 called Globus, there was a story of a whaling ship named Hope out in the Drake Passage in Antarctica on September 22nd, 1840. So when the crew of the Hope were out there one day, hunting what? whales. Hunt- <laughs> <laughs> they weren't doing anything else? No. With the hand mm. whales, harpoon. <laughs> <laughs> Filling their bottles. 
Um, they spotted what looked like an old beat up looking ship in a gap between two icebergs. So mine. They saw it, mine. <laughs> I saw it first, yeah. Captain. I own it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From what they could tell, there looked to be around seven fig- figures or men standing to attention on the main deck. So they'd just seen figures. They didn't know what it was. Frozen. So, oh, they did, sorry, they didn't know they were frozen at this point. Okay. They'd just seen seven were figures. Were they like, hey, hey, you guys. <laughs> and the captain was like, how rude. How rude. <laughs> they, you got to blow fire. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but sir, we're a whaling ship. Fire the harpoon whales. The ones with the, what are they called? The narwhals. <laughs> with their horns. <laughs> Gets on the ship and thrashes around. <laughs> Just gutting people. So so like any horror movie goes, the men decided to board the schooner Jenny and probably split up. <laughs> so they found out the ship's name was Jenny. This is when they got on there. So they knew nothing about it. They just seen figures there. They thought there was people. They got there. As they got closer, they noticed it. You know, they like excited because they're like yeah. another ship and we're yeah. in Antarctica. Yeah. Got to get rid of it. Like yeah. tow trucks. Get many, this off my territory. There how many whales. whales you fuck lately? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your blubber hole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So the crew from the whale, I hope, then proceeded to call out and search the ship by calling it, but there was no answer. So yeah. they were like, as they were boarding, like, hey, hey, we're coming aboard. So don't, rude. don't stab us. <laughs> um, so upon a further inspection, so they've boarded the ship and they've worked it out. So upon a further inspection, they realized the crew of the Jenny were dead and frozen solid in place. No. So almost like a freak storm had come through and frozen them almost instantly. And it was noted that they were still in relatively good condition, almost like they were frozen not long ago. So... Captain Bright of the Hope went below deck to inspect further to find the captain of the Jenny frozen at a table halfway through writing something. Oh. Mm, fucking cold. <laughs> <laughs> Colder than a witch's teeth. <laughs> yeah, so Bright picked up the ship's log that the captain of the Jenny was writing at and it read, May 4th, 1823, no food for 71 days. <gasps> I'm the only one left alive. So... It doesn't make sense compared to how everyone was Unless frozen. Unless they were there. all frozen up top. First. And that's what they say. So I thought the captain's supposed to go first. Like. No, he goes down with the ship. So he went down when it was cold. <laughs> I'm going to go under here. You know here. what it's like? You take the words and you shuffle them <laughs> to suit you. He made his own narrative. Yeah. I'll go down, guys. You stay here. Yeah. Well, they couldn't get there in time. They probably froze anyway. So to his horror, he also found the captain's wife curled up on a bed with a dog frozen solid, like in the same room. Wait, I didn't think you were supposed to bring women on those voyages. Uh, you the captain, you can do it. Look what happens true. when you do. Everyone dies and freezes. True. So. Witches all yeah. of them. <laughs> Maybe she had resting bitch face and just froze them all. Mm, that would have been it. Yeah, fucking women. Women yeah. are the worst, hey. The Bring dog, that was fine, unless it was a bitch. What sort Female of dog, dog was it? Female. <laughs> Female dog. <laughs> no, I don't. I didn't say what sort of dog it was. Um, so the ship's log said that Jenny left port of the in the Isle of Wight, which I was supposed to find out where the hell that was. Isle of Wight. That Actually, I think it is in here somewhere. F- I think it is in here somewhere further. Maybe but, oh. wouldn't it? If it left port, wouldn't it have to be somewhere near Antarctica? I would which assume not so. Much? But I'd South America, European, Madagascar. It's an English Channel. There you go. So that's where it first came it went from. South, yeah. So <clears throat> it left port in the Isle of Wight in 1822, which would mean the crew expired nearly 20 years before the Hope rocked up. So it left tw- nearly 20 years before the Hope found it. The log and they've all been kept in good nick because they're nick, all fried. Like and I guess, I guess if you you do get frozen like that, and it's cold enough to keep you that cold, the frozen, mm. you'd have to stay yeah frozen the whole time. You know what's I bullshit? So. You can't use frozen breast milk after six months, but these dudes just burling around for twenty years like fresh as fuck. Yeah, for like open us up, I'm ready to go. Yeah, like they could have done that just just defrosted them. They would have been like, oh, yeah, well, that shake was cold. it off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you doing on my ship? Yeah. <laughs> Them whale holes are mine. <laughs> <laughs> God, the blubber boys. <laughs> Spot over the whale blubber. Uh, so now some say the crew of the hope. Uh, so, so now some say the crew of hope gave the crew of Jenny a sea burial, um, but it has also been said that they were too freaked out by the eerie event that they jumped ship and left the bodies frozen in place. I would have just left them there. Yeah, someone I guess you don't. Why would you need to log the icicles off? I'd just leave them there to creep someone else out. Yeah. Oh, no, mm. well, then it, I don't know. I'd so, rather be a dead body on a ship than a dead body in the dark sea. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, they said they left them there to haunt the waters of Antarctica to this very day. So they reckon... So, they, do people so they just left them, they left them there last time they saw them. No, that's one of those theories. They don't know. They, they never really specified. They, some of them, some of the crew members said they... Had a burial at sea and threw them all in there. Yeah. Um, but some say, no, we just left them there. I believe it was the people who left them there is telling the truth. Because yeah. why would you lie and say we well, left them there the if you one? didn't? Which one's the worst Leaving one? Leaving them, I yeah, guess, so in that's like probably what their happened. heads. Yeah. yeah. No, we, no, we buried him in sea. 
What? We totally did. Such a liar, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, you full of shit. Yeah, I believe got, the people that left. I yeah. would have left. I'd be like, mm, no, thank you. Well, you wouldn't have the energy. It's freezing cold. You don't want to spend too much time out there on deck. And you can only get the blubber or give him a burial. What are you doing? But also, it's like a very Come weird thing. Come straight for jerk mate. <laughs> jerk <laughs> mate. <laughs> It's also a very <laughs> weird thing. Like you'd think they'd be like, if we leave him here, maybe someone else can come and have a little looksy poo. Yeah, or maybe one day we're going to start a museum yeah. <laughs> and charge people, <laughs> charge people to come see it. <laughs> Shit like that creeps me out though. It's kind of like, uh, have you heard of the Terror? Yeah, that, that the Franklin, ship? the Franklin, and the Terror. Yeah, the, the two ships. Yeah, I have an article. I read an article recently about it from National Geographic. Like they reckon they've kind of half solved what happened, sort of thing, but they yeah. have to wait until next summer to go back and test their theories they found they found a lot of evidence like um diaries and stuff like that pretty much didn't they get like beach like frozen in the snow and then they couldn't and they couldn't go anywhere so they started i haven't heard of that what is it what happened so the artemis i think it's the artemis the franklin might have been the one that went after him i can't remember can you just look behind you josh there's a like literally right behind you there's a stack of books out underneath the national geographic one i mean Underneath the National Geographic, the top one is this that one. Must have been the Frank. I don't know why. I thought yeah. I don't know why I said Artemis. It's a cool it, name for a ship. This is a cool name, Artemis. You should take this and read it. It was actually super Pump interesting. Pump that ship down. No fucking way, man. And it was basically they were saying that when they went to look, they here it is. Artemis sounds like it would transform. <laughs> um. The explorer was Sir John Franklin. And he searched for clues. What are the name of the fucking ships? Where's the article? You might have been right. Uh, the Erebus. Ereb- that's it, that's the Erebus. It. So it was yeah. the captain was Franklin. Yeah. So it was the Erebus and the Terror. And Matt, like, which ship do you want to go on? Do you want to go on to Erebus? Or would you like to board the Terror? It's like, <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to stick with me, mate. Erebus over here. <laughs> okay, you're on the Terror. It's like, but Terror, you'd you. be feared though. Like, I know what you mean, but if I was on the terror, I'd be like, people are not going to come near me on the terror. No. Well, they while were, I'm being why we're terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm already scared. I'm already in. But you should take that and read that. It's really good. Um, so this guy went to do the same trip as the terror and the Erebus. So what they were doing was trying to find a way, a passage through the Arctic, like the north. Yeah. yeah. They were looking for it. And he really should have pulled back because they were good, running out of food and that. And he made an error and decided to keep going as far as they can tell from what, all the stuff they'd heard. And they got frozen in the ice and they ran out of food. So they had to like go to land and try and get help from the Inuits and like the yeah. native population there. And they never knew what happened to them. They never found bodies. They Polar never found anything. For sure. Well, they reckon in the, they talk about in this story that I was reading from National Geographic that um, this guy, so he basically got as much information as he could. He was really into it, got as much information as he could. And he flew around this island and um, he found it. He reckoned he, he was like going in grids, finding it. But that whole trip, um, sorry, he was looking for some sort of temple or something mm-hmm. that someone had made and he'd finally found it. And for some reason that trip, his GPS hadn't worked. Ugh. And the island looks so similar from the top. It's all just stone that when he could he couldn't find it again, mm. and he was searching in an area, and they had a dude who was like um an Inuit helping them, and he kept saying how it was bad luck to search this area, like to to look for the dead or something. It was something like that. And then when they left, or when it got cold, and they left or whatever, the dude had found where the Inuit had circled on his map, saying he says he's already checked here, but this is where it is. But I didn't want to tell you that it was here because I don't want nothing to do with none of that bad juju. Yeah. So he's like, this is where it is. But then because it's all frozen over now, they can't return oh, so until the following yeah, summer right. to go and so find So now we're it. waiting. Now we're waiting. Uh-huh. I don't like waiting. I know there was a diary there and they said like some crewmates had died from like starvation, yeah. but they, yeah. There's a te- there's still the te- people missing. Yeah, the Terry is a really good show. It's like kind of half supernatural. It's I don't think you would like it because it's like a real... I'm so it's, factual. It's no... It is super factual. That's the problem. It's a oh. real fucking slow oh, burn. Okay. It's so slow, but yeah, there's right. a creature picking them off. Yeah. On the is it? Mm-hmm. The movie, The Terror. It's a TV show. Yeah, the Terror. The, yeah, I've right. seen it on. Is that one where they go on in the water as well with the suit? Yes. Yeah, I've seen it bits and pieces. It's really is this creepy. new. Twenty nineteen. Okay, so fairly new. Yeah, it was, it's it got Black Jack old. Randall in it. Who's Black Jack Randall? From Outlander. What's the Outlander? Blackjack Randall. You've, oh, that's never, so you've seen Outlander. Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Tobias Menzies. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, they've seen it. He's really good in it. But it's a, like it's a very, very slow burn, but that's what kind of happens. But it's an like, eerie one, though, isn't like a dark, eerie sort of... Yeah, they get frozen in the ice, yeah. and then they have to like go out onto land to try and find food and stuff, and then something's stalking them instead. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What's that called? Crazy. The Terror. The Terror. I'm going to have to watch, watch it now, yeah. yeah. It's pretty creepy, but you, it's, uh, it's a slog. Yeah. Well, I heard a story... I told Tilly the other day, I read about it. It was something to do with a ship's crash or froze or sunk in the ice down. I don't know if it was Arctic or Antarctica, but um, they they got off the ship. We're on an island, uh, in a, ro- a boat, sorry, to a, to a little, like ice, uh, what do you call them? Like a ice cap. The fl- floating ice, they're called. Glacier. Glaciers or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like a big sort of one of them. And there's Iceberg. like four or five of them on it. And Next minute they see a polar bear because they reckon they're vicious as fuck. Mm. Polar bears are the worst. They because they're, they're, the worst only, they're, they're the only bear that is strictly carnival. Yeah, and will eat just to eat, you know, not yeah. to kill you if they feel threatened or whatever. They just want to eat you. And it, apparently it was like they seen it in the distance and it saw them and they saw it coming and it was jumping the glaciers, mm. going in the water and then it'd be on one closer. Yeah. Jumping again, it'd be on one close. And it's, it's, they, they were like, it was just beelining for us. And it, then it, it went on the last one closest to him, went in the water and come out and grabbed one, yeah. dragged him into the water, took him to that closest one and killed him, ate him, come back. Did it come back? Yeah, come I back heard for that. Another. So I don't know how many survived, but obviously some, at least one did to tell the story, but it was like... It, was it kept ruthless. coming back. It kept coming back and one. then imagine sitting there on the water and they're good swimmers apparently, really yeah. good swimmers. And it just pops out in what? the water, kills them screaming over on the one next to them, eating them in they're front const- and they're just waiting. They're to- constantly looking for food. They're always yeah. starved. And these guys have only got, you know, they're, free, they're rugged up, freezing, can't really move in a little ro- in a rowboat thing. So I don't know. I don't know how, what happened with the ship to make them get to that point and how they were rescued. I was just focus on the polar bear part. Yeah, there I, was, I did hear that. Because they talked about this, the guys that were redo like following in the art, the Erebus and Terra's trail, they were like, we've had a polar bear. St-. They they were in like a fucking, not like a, well, like a yacht kind of thing, catamaran or whatever yeah. they are. And they had a polar bear stalking them along the ice caps for 21 days. Yeah, that's... 21 that's, days. That's crazy. So, because it's so... Like, it, they're so frozen in. They, they It's so... You should read it. It's really good. They was, it was so bad that they have like the poles to hit the ice so that their ship can yeah. just make yeah. it through. Yeah. And, and then it freezes like, behind them pretty this much. This is like yeah. a little catamaran sort of thing. It wasn't a big ship or yeah. anything. It was only little. And they were like, yeah, the polar bear was stalking them along the ice as they're just trying waiting. to make through these. Li- they're just oh, little channels. Yeah. Yeah. And at one stage they were really worried because it was stalking them and they got stuck. Oh, no. So they, it was kind of like what happened with the Terror and the Erebus and they were stuck and they were like, fuck me. And one of the dudes who didn't own the boat or anything but was, like, helping with it was, like, fuck it and just, like, hit a bunch of ice and then just, like, turned the engine up or whatever and just rammed through the ice and that's that's what saved their life. Imagine if he sunk it and they'd have to get well, off. Well, the dude was saying he was kind of shitty with him at the time because he was like, bro, you can't be doing that with it. And then it, but it's the only thing that's kind of saved their life. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd, Imagine that. No, nah, I'd be doing the same. It's yeah. a no from me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that would, no, I couldn't. It'd be, the conditions would be horrible. The food, you'd probably have hardly any food to be rations and that, and then the polar bears were following. Well, it wasn't long ago the researchers were stuck in their research facility because they were getting surrounded by a pack of polar bears. That's crazy. Oh, like just sitting outside, just surrounding them. When was them. this? This was like three years ago. In Antarctica? Yeah. No, it can't be. Antarctica doesn't have polar bears. Or Arctic. It must be Arctic. Because you know what yeah. I learned? Antarctica literally means no polar bears. There's no life at all, is there? No, I don't penguins. think so. I think it's penguins, isn't there? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Is that where Happy Feet was set? Emperor. Because a few of those were Australian accents, so it's got to be Antarctica, right? Yeah. Emperor penguins, man. I love that we host an informative podcast. And yeah, we're just like, yo, Google does that have anything? They'll find yeah. it. Sure. Yeah. But it makes people go and research. <laughs> I mean, if they go around and say, <laughs> to but they like, said those it on, people are full of yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, they said it on Mellow Tiger, like, they're the idiots for not backing it up. Dad still right. gives me grief like that as well. He's just like, you know, it'd be good if your show was factual. I'm like, it fucking is to the best of our ability. Like, we reference that. And that, that was the best of our ability. Yeah, you only know what you know. Yeah, you can't know everything. <laughs> if the textbook that says Charles Darwin told me, like, we could argue about this all day. Charles Darwin believes in evolution, but pe- other people don't. So we're referencing the people da, that, da, that da, support da, da, our opinions. Bling, bling, bling. Bling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyway, just finished off. So that's pretty much. So, um, yeah, so they they there was mixed reviews, uh, mixed conversations on whether they buried him at sea or left him there. So no one really knows. But um, but here's the shit theory, but probably more accurate: the crew of Hope made the whole thing up, is what people their theory. Ah, oh. but like they didn't say. No one's come out and said, "Yeah, we made it up." But no one can sort of say how did they just freeze twenty years is a long time for a boat to just be sitting. And the Hope weren't. Like a government ship, where they were just like a, a privately funded whaling just a sexually ship. Sexually deprived whaling ship. 
about that blubber hanging around. I'm yep. just sitting here looking at that blubber thinking, <laughs> if ain't nobody going to use your bit of a waist now, yeah. wouldn't it be? It puts the blubber <laughs> on the skin and that's it gets <laughs> the hose like, again. Hey, that my blubber. <laughs> <laughs> Snatching blubber. <laughs> <laughs> the captain goes downstairs. It's just all the crew just ripping blubber out of their dog's hands. <laughs> Got the newspaper, bang, bang. Yeah. He's like, now we can't tell what's blubber and what's semen. <laughs> Doesn't matter, everybody on the path. <laughs> Back to the path. Back to the path. <laughs> blubber they pie. took our dam. <laughs> Just wriggling around in the blubber pile. <laughs> <laughs> can't freeze when you're moving. <laughs> Ass is gonna get me, <laughs> Captain. What are you doing? The ass is gonna get you. I'm just helping you, boy. <laughs> That's his hair. I'm helping you. <laughs> You're so greasy. I like it. <laughs> We're gonna send you through one of the cannons. <laughs> you so you so slight. You fit through one of them portholes now, boy. <laughs> it's time to walk the plank. <laughs> you won't walk my plank, son. With that blubber. <laughs> Okay. So why would they make it up? Why would they make that story? Well, because they're saying thinking. it's so ridiculous in terms of that no, there's no way a ship can stand for twenty years. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous. People frozen on deck, still standing. Like how does not how's it accidentally sunk or okay? How they not fallen over and smashed or how they stayed frozen for so that's what yeah. So they could have been frozen in and not be actually be fro- like floating. Do you know what I mean? But they were floating, were they? Because they could have. They been just said it was between two. I'd say the ship was frozen there for. In the same spot, so yeah, and then maybe like they it melted and it could still float because why? Yeah. Why not? But it could still be frozen there. There was this thing that happened in um, Yellowstone National Park one winter when um, a small herd of bison froze like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Like a snap so froze, can, yeah. and they were trying to figure out fuck how did this happen, and it had to do with like the geysers. So that's the really hot, bubbly water that shoots up that they were trying to stay warm by being by these geysers, and something happened like scientific with to do with the geyser gas and how cold it was that created an immediate cold snap yeah so they froze in place and that's That's because they were were like standing up or like they thought it was so strange that these buffalo had just frozen solid it's very strange and it was that it was to do with the geysers giving off some sort of heat which dropped something low like it was an immediate so you think that could happen there that could happen like in antarctica where it's cold i mean i feel like anything's not possible. like anything's possible, but I'm sure there would be some way that it could potentially happen if if some storm met something and there was a like a, just a temperature like a hot, change, like a big yeah, like a yeah. snap, yeah, something well, I guess so. that doesn't happen. Like I think that's only happened like maybe once or twice in Yellowstone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I don't. Think, yeah, I think they just find it hard to believe because of 20, 20 years yeah. of it as well. Fucking weird. Twenty years is a, is a long time. It's a long time for someone to be frozen. Though. Yeah. Like that weather's got to stay that, or that weather event has to stay like that. Well, the eighteen hundreds in Antarctica, it probably would. Well, you lose a ship in the eighteen hundreds, you're not finding it. The shit leaves dock and it doesn't come back. How do you find it in eighteen hundreds? You're not you got yeah. nothing to you know, there's no planes and anything like, like that. I microchip so. that shit. <laughs> yeah. I got tagged it with the electronics we don't have. We chip <laughs> burn him. Burn yeah. him. Yeah. We're the gonna I- save the people. The iPhone was actually invented in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. They just burnt her with never it. come out with it though. I don't know where he is. Google. <laughs> but um the other others include aliens. So of course. Yes, really? of course. Um the ship the ship was sucked from our reality for twenty years and spat back out. That's like cool. A portal down oh, there somewhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah, these are the crazy ones. They saw that blubber on that ship and they thought, ain't you going to have all that fun? I yeah. will too. Ali- 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 <laughs> aliens like blubber too. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's true, they think the only possible theory was sudden ice storm freezing mm-hmm. everyone on deck or well, the captain and his wife survived below but starved to death because they were below away but out of the why are they fr- frozen now? Because over time, I guess, they would have just starved or frozen below mm-hmm. deck because in the end, no heat, no food. Okay. But then to freeze it to death, though, instead of being curled yeah, up with Yeah, he would have been curled up with her or yeah. something. Yeah, so, I don't know. There's a lot of holes in this. There's a lot of holes in it. But it's creepy. It's cool story. if it's true, though. It's a cool there story. A deck of I like just it. frozen people standing up. And this is why I always say, I want to believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I like the theory of the portal. They disappear for 20 years and get spat back out. Like they're sailing or something. Other. No, I don't want that one. Wouldn't they be older? <laughs> No. Because 20 years is 20 years. No, but the, where they went wasn't, though. Oh, like one second past yeah, the camera. Okay. Yeah. But that doesn't make any sense to why they're frozen. That was colder on the other side. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's where the storm was, the one second storm. They were <laughs> freezing. <laughs> okay. Captain, I don't think it could get any colder. <laughs> <laughs> it's a button. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Josh. That That's was awesome. lovely. I really oh, appreciate it. So cool. Yeah. Look at the investment you've made. Hmm. Are the kids allowed to play with it? No. I got Love their that. own better ones. Love I got that. what you guys got. But. Your turn, George. Uh, cool. All right. 
Well, seeing we're on the snow train, I'm going to get into, we all have all heard of the Dialogue Pass yes. incident. Mm-hmm. And I think we've covered it on this show before. I think Dad done a little thing on so it. So we probably should do it again. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably should. But the man wanted to be factual. Let's just, mm-hmm. yeah, just Dad goes, you heard of this Wikipedia? That's what he said. Hey, at the yeah. start, he's like, have you guys heard of Wikipedia? It's really good. Yes, we've just, heard of it. I was like, God. Um, just to recap, because I'm reading the book now. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dan got it for Christmas? Last was it last year? year? Yeah. And um, yeah, been going through it, and um, it's basically like ten uh, Russian hikers, students, went off to hike this mountain, and our one one ended up getting sore. He's, he <laughs> had conditions and stuff like that, and he had to turn around and come home. And lucky the, bastard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, literally conditions. the only survivor of the expedition. <laughs> Um, the rest of them kept on going, and so they went and started camping. Like in, I think it was like the Ural Mountains in Russia. Yeah. So there's nine of them. There's a few of them. There, nine right? of them, yeah. yeah. And then they didn't c- end up coming home when they were supposed to. So do you know what they were studying? Like, were they yeah, all... Yeah, one was studying, like, geology. The other two was studying, like, technology, radio was, technology and stuff it, like that. I feel like, was the hike to do with, like, their study interests sort of no, thing? Or no, no, this was, was just a recreational... They, they were all, like, experienced hikers, recreational. Okay. There was one that was in... Actually, the guy who turned around, Yuri... I forget what his last name was, but he had a geology course. Well, one of them had a geology course, and there was stuff out there that they could go and visit that oh, was a bit, okay. had a bit of a geology in it. So there was some there that were going for that, but it was mostly just recreational, okay. just going. You know how they, they just go on ski trips and that to yeah. test themselves. Anyway, they they didn't return when they were supposed to, so mm-hmm. they sent out search expeditions, and they ended up finding, I think three of them were, or four of them were, buried in some snow just underneath like a tree mm-hmm. and there was like a campfire and they stuff They tried like to that. start a fire or something. Yeah, they started try- uh, tried to start a fire and then they didn't find the other five until like a while after and they were buried under like five foot of snow. They they know how they died. They had like um, uh, exposure and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's how they thought they died. And um, but the weird thing about it was they don't know the circumstance of how they died, like why that happened. Yeah, yeah. people saying avalanche and stuff like that, but they don't really think that suited what happened. Yeah. So they want to know how it, how it got to that point. Like they were in a tent and all that, weren't they? And then next they, cut, they cut out the back end. Well, and they running. cut, didn't they? They cut. The weird thing was they cut from the inside out. The yeah. weird thing was the tent inside the tent. There was food. There was a heater, shoes and stuff. Like. Well, yeah, they had taken off their shoes, which isn't uncommon when you have hypothermia. Paradoxal undressing. Y- yeah, you want to because you get real hot. You want to just take off clothes. There were some that were fully dressed, had good clothes on, but others were just like just in their undies. Yeah, because no, no socks. Is and stuff. yeah, you, the paradoxal undressing is you get hypothermia, but you feel hot, but you're not. So That's they, right. You strip down. Is it because like, your, your body's f- reacting to hypothermia cold. and I'm sweating? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and uh, you're right. So it looks like that they left the tent in a like a hurry. Like they had cuts like they in were the trying tent. To get there were three cuts from the inside. made from the yeah. inside so they could get out as quick so as they could. So not the zipper? No. So I think they had, yeah. Oh, they it seems like you can't thing. go out that way then. Like something's, for well, some, I don't know what, I, I'm not trying to make it there, sound like there a was monster snow, or something. There was snow on the tent, like it was half buried. Yeah, but it could have been over time the, op- the opening wasn't the buried wasn't part. Buried. It was the back of the tent that was buried. It could just be there's a because there was quite a few of them. Maybe not all of them. Like they were all trying to get out in a hurry, so some yeah. were running out that way. But they were like fucking move, like you know. Yeah. What Maybe I mean? it was half an avalanche. A block hit them, and they thought, "I'm not getting stuck like claustrophobia. I'm not getting stuck in a tent under all this snow that's blocking the." They might have heard. It sounded, it sounded like they almost heard something, and they wanted to come outside. Yeah. Did it free candy? Sorry, just one other thing. Didn't some of the bodies show injuries that were consistent with like a car crash or something? Yes, that's right. Some of them had like, like blunt, a big bludgeoned fall? heads yeah. and stuff like that. But not by something like Internal a robot or someone damage. could... Like yeah. by a person with fists or using a makeshift Well, weapon. they think there's like heaps of um, theories. They think like the... Um, Menzies, was it? Or something like that? The Men- Manzi tribe. Yeah. They thought they might have... Because they found tracks like near the ski skiers' tracks and they thought maybe they followed them. And done mm. something because they were on their land, but they brought someone in who spends a lot of time with them and said they don't they don't act aggressive towards yeah. Russians. They're more inclined to take them in and help them. Yeah, it wasn't us. Nope. Yeah, ba- basically, it's got like a hair made out of bl- like a necklace made out of blonde hair. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. The other we're, th- we're in the face mask with someone. <laughs> of them just that's no, 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 that's wild. I haven't seen I haven't seen them for a while. No, I'm yeah. Yuri, I'm I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Holding behind their back. <laughs> It's Yuri's first. I'm big Yuri. I'm fine. <laughs> I turned back. <laughs> um, 
Another theory is a sudden windstorm came in, like a very because it was known to have shitty weather. And there's your brute force. For so a car it came in and thought. It caught them off guard, and the five they found buried under five foot of snow, they thought might have tried to like get in the little ravine and try and hide oh, from it, yeah. and then the snow fell on them because pretty much all of them had the blunt force trauma. Oh, yeah. So I think the snow might have fallen yeah, on them. Yeah, right. Another one is some sort of weapon because they were found with radiation on their body. Oh, uh, yes. And it is known on the night from other ski expeditions out there they saw something in the sky like flying so like orbs in the sky. And the KGB also locked this file up, didn't they? They we Why would you do that? I'll get to that yeah. soon. There was one expedition where one of the per like they were inside it was enough the light in the sky was enough for campers that were actually sleeping in their like inside their tents to notice it and come outside and look oh, at really? it. Oh really? Yep. Some Do they say what colour it was? Like red orangey colour. Yeah. And then even one of them went to the extent of saying he thought it was literally another planet coming to collide with Earth. Oh, really? He, th- that's he, how he was actually that scared that that's what it looked like. So that's another kind of... Exp- this is from multiple groups that were camping around the area on the night. The okay. fact that the KGB was that you said they didn't want to release it or whatever. Well, with the funerals, they wouldn't even let them bring... all The, the, the town what? they all grew up in, Severse yeah. something, They want, the families wanted to bring all their bodies back and have one big funeral and... Like all that, and yeah. that, like the KGB, and that were just like, nah. So we that's we want to we want to keep it on the down line. Oh really? Yeah, yeah they had those separate funerals. They didn't want them buried there. They wanted they wanted the students buried in the town, like a little unknown town, like had cabins and stuff. Yeah, like uh, like out the back of Whoop where they were See, that last town before normal. they went on the track. They wanted to bury them there. Why would the KGB care? They just right. want that downplay. They but don't the, want this to get but out. But why would they? Care. That's right? what I'm saying. Like, yeah. That or, that adds to like the radiation. Or no, like that's the mystery just, of it. Yeah. yeah. Of course, another one's aliens. That everyone thinks aliens had yeah, something. Yeah, it's, to it's easy. It. It's one word. <laughs> but why I bring that up is because that happened in 1959. Yeah. There was another incident that happened in the the same area in 1993. What was the first one? Sorry. What was 1959. It? Right. So, so this later. one's 40 years later. Yeah. But from this expedition. There was one survivor. Oh. So this is basically the story of that Ooh, one survivor. She, oh, yeah. my so belly t- He just called the... Joel just aliens. <laughs> <laughs> That's just it, aliens. That's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're done. I got a sore butt and answers. <laughs> so this is known as the Kamar Darbin incident. So in the summer of 1993, a group of seven hikers were planning an expedition to explore the Kamar Daban mountain range. Such a cool name, mm-hmm. Kamar Daban. I don't even know how to Man pronounce Bab- it. Might Bab- be Dabin, Kamar, Ka- Kamar Dabin range. The way you said it's perfect. Okay, cool. We'll go with that. <laughs> Although the hikes would be challenging, the area was not entirely known. And in fact, part of the range were popular amongst tourists. So long as they would visit the right time of year. So as I like, we were saying before, the weather is increasingly bad on this mountain at certain times like of the year. Like and weather, like temperature. You go in spring or summer instead of like when it's snowing. Yeah, exactly. Shit. Yeah. Leading the expedition was... Ludmila Korinova. Yes, it was. Cor- Korovina, sorry. Michael. Which is Michael. kind of strange because Ludmila was actually w- the name of one of the students that was in the Dial of Pass as well. Really? Yeah. Um, so she's a 41-year-old survivalist and experienced mountaineer guide. With her, s- with, with her were six of her students ranging from 24 years old to just 15 years old. Mm. Ludmila did have a reputation for pushing her students on the hiking trails and distances she chose, but she was not reckless. Everyone involved expected the summer's expedition to be simply another in a long of exciting hiking Wait, adventures. Wait, so this is at summer? This is, this is in, in summer. summer? Yep. Right. Everything was going to plan as the hikers set off on August 2nd, 1993. Sorry, can I just ask, is it snowing? Is it... Is it like snow in summer Does, here? Yeah, the or? summer mean it it's, all, it's always snow. Okay, it's always snow. That's yes, that's so a warm. Yeah, right. It's, it's always snow, thing. but it's like a warmer temperance yeah, sort right. of snow. It's not like hectic weather, like yeah. blizzards and shit. Yeah, I'm sure. Th- I'm sure five. the weather events do yeah. occur in summers and stuff, but it's less likely, I guess. Yeah. You're gonna have more chance of just blue skies and white. Yeah, snow. instead of minus fifty, it's minus five or something. Yeah. So the group was one of the three hiking parties in the region at the same time. So there was two other ones. And one of them was led by Ludmilla's daughter, Natalia. So they were expected to meet Ludmilla's party three days later on August the 5th. So her daughter's leading another one of those, um, another expedition party. Yeah, right. And they were supposed to meet with them. They're supposed to meet up with them three, what was it, three days later? As in like they've 
who's so someone set out first a group and they're setting out after i don't know if they come if they set out later or if they came from different, different points places. maybe yeah, right. it doesn't go on to say with that yeah so however however on the scheduled date Ludmila's group were nowhere to be found Natalia was unconcerned. There were seven fit and experienced hikers in her mother's group and she was sure they'd just missed the rendezvous for any number of innocuous reasons. Mm. So, she, like, this stuff happens all the time. People get delayed yeah. by, st- like, storms or Bears injuries or, yeah. or something like that. Bears, it all, it happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, it happened to me. Her mum almost called the police. Oh, that's right, I did too. Because we, 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 we had to wait for so long for the bears to move off the trail so we could keep going. That's fr- that would freak that, me out. Yeah, well, we, you had to, and then it was like on a trail for ages. I think we were stuck for like half hour, maybe an hour, and then they sauntered off. But then by that time, we were so late getting back that mum had like called the bloody Rocky Mountain Police. I'd be afraid shit. I would. <laughs> yeah, I'd be afraid of what I would do in that scenario. Like I would switch straight to survival mode and cut someone's Achilles. Like, and it's just that, best, yeah. It's that, not, it maybe. wasn't that deep. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I'm afraid. Yeah. I don't know where I could. So we're, if we're in a group and we see bears and you're just sitting there skin in the group. Who yeah. are you going to cut up? Put it this Who way. Who do I like the least? <laughs> we are you were, staring at me? <laughs> we were in a group of like 10 <laughs> people. Just down. And there were only four bears. So I feel like the odds were pretty good. Yeah, but there's always the odds. I would have pushed Daniel in better. front of me. If you, had you, can always, you can always make the odds you better. You your odds. Sports, sports better. Let's, sports <laughs> let's never go anywhere <laughs> yeah. with Josh. No, no, it goes somewhere. But when it gets dangerous, just keep an eye on. I don't, I don't know what will happen. That's the scam. Your t- it's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> you live your life by I just have to outrun you. That's your exactly, vibe for your yeah. whole life is I just have to be quicker than you. Yeah. I don't have to outrun the bear. I just yeah. have to outrun you. Exactly. <laughs> Throw a rock at it and who did it? <laughs> 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 Thank you for playing breaking glass with my children. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it happens all, like it's so easy on trails, like or you could um someone twists an ankle and then they become a liability and you have to catch them. You get up late for some reason. Like yeah. So, so many, there's all different yeah, sort of things. All, that, well, so many. So that's why they weren't really concerned that they were uh, a little bit late. But um, five days later on August the 10th, a group of kayakers on the river at the base of the Kamar Daban Mountains noticed something strange. Emerging from the trees which lined the riverbanks was a lone girl who stopped still as she saw the group and simply stared at them. So she's just sitting, she just walks out of the trees, just sits there, just staring at them, mm-hmm. or the kayakers. When the kayakers approached close to see if the girl was okay, they froze in horror. The girl was covered in blood. Mm. That's Lord. Mm. After <laughs> she just starts paddling backwards. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Good day to you. <laughs> no English. <laughs> no English. <laughs> in front of the kayak, picks up. <laughs> <laughs> After trying to comfort the girl, the kayakers, the kayakers discovered that her name was Valentina Uchochenko and that she was one of the six students that Ludmila had led into the mountains on the expeditions a week earlier. She's murdered them all. And she was, she was literally the only survivor of the group. Covered in blood. So Valentina, Valentina, also known as Valia, was rescued and taken to the local police station where she revealed her story. According to Valia, the trip had progressed entirely according to plan. To plan. Aided by good weather and high morale, the group had reached their intended summit. Ahead of schedule after two days, so they they were ahead of schedule. They reached the top of the mountain in two days. So everything's going perfect then. Really. Everything's going. It even went not say everything was per- like it was going more mm, perfect. Like perfect. they'd made great they were ahead of time. Yeah. Um. So the first sign of trouble started as the group began the descent, where their unexpected where unexpected heavy rainfall made the journey more difficult than ex- anticipated. So they just run into some um some real heavy rainfall, so it's really bogged them down. Tired from the added weight of their wet gear and the group huddled in their makeshift camp on the evening of 4th of August. They never let, they nevertheless remained in high spirits. So even though they, it was getting, they were getting rain on really heavy, they had to, it was becoming too difficult to progress. So they had to bundle down, make a camp, but they were yeah. still, they were still good. They were still in high spirits. 99 bottles of beer on the wall, <laughs> like just in the tent. Well, they're singing yeah. Sarah, one of the people. <laughs> 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 They expect- getting lazy. <laughs> <laughs> they expected to descend the remaining route without any problems the following day and rendezvous with Natalia's group as intended. But something happened soon after they'd finished their morning meal and started their final descent. So they've packed up, they've all had their, their breakfast, they're ready to go down the mountain. As they were walking, the last person in the group, Sasha, suddenly clutched at his face and began to scream. As his companions rushed to aid him, he fell to the ground, blood streaming from his eyes and ears. What? Ludmila sent the rest of the group downhill to look for aid from Natalia and her friends, but they had not long 
They had not gone far before they heard Ludmilla scream, join Sasha's. So the one who would stay there with him. This was the leader of the group that stayed behind with Sasha and sent everyone out to get help from her daughter's Rose group. Ears. Mm. As they rushed back, another student suddenly started bleeding from her face too. Mate, get fucked. I'm running away. Smashing her head against a rock in a frenzy what until she f- passed out. Fuck. Mm. <laughs> How have we never heard this? I know. This is what, when I read it, I was like, fuck, this is like in the same place. Was this place. in this dialogue past book? No. No, this was an article. You just I found, found it. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's kind of like a buckle of At the same time, I'm reading the Dial of Pass, so it was like kind of a coincidence. So you just like slowly put Dial of Pass yeah, back. I was like, this you, like, is way this more interesting. Yeah. Um, two further, st- two other students immediately fled in horror. So they're like, yeah, fuck, I'm yeah. out. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're ran. Yeah, I like them. Um, so they left Valya mm. and her friend Dennis. Were the only ones there, and they were just surrounded by. Dennis three. just sounds like trouble. They yeah, just, right, Dennis. So it was her and Dennis yeah. with three dead bodies. Dennis, oh, Dennis, Dennis uh, is my. Oh, so we're alone. You we can make split them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna eat that half dead fucker. I can see now. Imagine the movie. The, if they made a movie of it, oh my god, Dennis, what do we do? And he just turns around, his eyes are blue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the other two other students just ran. They're like, so fuck two went. Yep. The first Val- one, Valia and Dennis are just standing there with three dead bodies. Three dead bodies, including the uh, what was her name? The, the Ludmila. So her and two students went down. Yep. The one bashed her head in the first one. Yep. Oh my god, was that good? Yep. Valia and Dennis resolved to descend the mountain as quickly as possible. Of course, like I'm getting the fuck. So they so they died, right? Yeah. So. Hear me out for a second. What if we hang around? <laughs> <laughs> Find out what it is. Yeah. Poking with a stick. I don't want to be left out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But after only a short while, Dennis collapsed as well. No way. Foaming at the mouth Go. and coughing up blood like the others. That sounds like poison. Valia was left Does alone and continued like down poison. the mountain, carrying only what she had with her, trying to get as far away from the madness as possible. Can't so she's just poison. trying to get, it, get as far as way. Valia spent the next four days alone on the mountain trying to reach help. Terrified of whatever happened to her friends would also happen to her, she followed power lines down the mountain until she found the river and the hikers. Crazy though that... They, it happened suddenly to everybody one by one, but she lasted two days and she's still... I'd be like, why? Who What's, ate what for breakfast? Did she eat? It would that's be, put there. That's the only <laughs> other way. It would be a further two weeks before a helicopter search Holy found the missing shit. hikers. The two who had fled the scene before Valia and Dennis were found dead, apparently having suffered the same fate as their friends and an wow. autopsy showed all but Ludmila had died from extreme hypothermia and exposure. Ludmila, Ludmila, Ludmila overcome by the situation, had died of a heart attack. At 40? What the... That doesn't... That's extreme mm. hypothermia. <laughs> that's extreme, extreme. Wait, so if they're already... Maybe that didn't kill them, though. So maybe it's, like, injured them and then nighttime... Like, you know when it's, like, yeah. their blood and that hasn't killed them, but they're obviously very sick. Yeah. And then nighttime comes and then they die from hypothermia. Probably. That's yeah. what ends them. Yeah. So now we get into like what caused these sudden symptoms which seem to happen in one localised area. Uh, many have sus- suspected some sort of nerve agent caused the deaths. Yeah. That sounds like it. Like this is in a r- rural, like rural place. Maybe they were doing some testing with weapons or something Probably. like that. Didn't it's know nu- anyone was it's there. It's a nuclear theory again too. Like yeah, yeah, finding radiation and yeah, stuff radiation. on them. Yeah. Um, a diagnosis which fits the symptoms and which would explain the deaths either paralyzing the hikers leading to death from exposure or killing them that's outright as with Ludmilla. So that's what, that's what the nerve agent gas kind of looks like it does. Another one is, did the hikers drink contaminated water, perhaps from the lake nearby? But that's excessive, I though. feel like you that's wouldn't a very just quick, yeah. out the eyes, out yeah, the It goes on to say no evidence has ever been found to support this. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it just goes on all that sort of stuff. Um, others have suggested that the hikers may have unwittingly Forested a poisonous mushroom. Still, so how quick so it happened. So, chucks yeah. in the breakfast. This might explain why Valia alone was unharmed, having by chance not ingested any of the deadly fungus. Mm. But the suddenness of the onset of yes. the symptoms would otherwise suggest this is what happened. Right. But w- that whole story is why I bring it up. They, the autopsies and that only showed like the hypothermia and the exposure, which is yeah. the same with the diet of pass. They were all found with. Like hypothermia and exposure Maybe they got as, well. That shit as well. Maybe, but wouldn't they be covered in blood? Oh, probably not if they're left there for I, weeks. Yeah, I don't know. True. Like, um, but like in the tent, they could eat those mushrooms. And if something like that happens in the tent, someone starts going fucking. What? Then cut, I'd be cutting the back out to get out of there. Maybe. Yeah, that would be creepy. That's hey? messed up. Yeah, like one, but it happened like so. Not even just quick, but okay, quick but one to the other like that. If it's yeah. snowing though, and there's snow on the ground, where are they getting these mushrooms from? 
I don't know. Maybe maybe it's like it wouldn't a, be all snow. It'd be yeah. dry. It'd be like patches and yeah. It sounds like a nerve. Like it sounds airborne. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the eyes and ears, but then the foaming then she, from the mouth sounds like it's something internal. Especially if the mushroom makes more sense than the nerve agent because she value was there with them. So and wouldn't she be affected? Yeah, by exactly. The nerve she was in well? the middle by the sounds of two around the other way. That and she was the more. only one that didn't eat it. Yeah. That makes more sense. But what about her mum then? If her mum didn't succumb to the same issues. Who's mum? No, no Natalia, Natalia. Sorry, that's another sorry. group. Yeah, so sorry. what did happen to that group? And then they just never met up with them, I guess. No, never met up. That's kind of wild. But you would think in even the 90s, you'd be like not eating fungi. I don't know. Especially unknown stuff that you yeah. find on the ground. But they say that that kind of, not that it's common, but people mistake mushrooms and sh- like plants all the time. You yeah. can, it's really easy. Like that's what happened to... Um, old mate Chris McCandless from what's the one with Emil Hirsch plays him and he goes into the wild uh, into, into the, the wild. wild yeah um and he ate the wrong plant he got it mixed up and that's ultimately that's what made died. him so sick and yeah. yeah could have it been like it maybe didn't do so much internally physically to him but changed their mental like he might have been scratching his eyes out on some sort of high and because that chick bashed her head was she bashing her head on a rock like he might yeah, that that's where the blood's weird. coming from maybe he's just gone nuts. And she's gone nuts. That's how the where the blood's. But it's not just sleeping from his out. Ears. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe he just went nuts on himself. And maybe she just seen blood on his face. And so you're saying they turned like he started screaming. They turned around, and that's yeah, like, like he's, he's having some delusional himself. bloody. There might be heaps of pain in his head, and he's trying to get to it because he's on my, uh, some sort of mushroom. That's maybe moment. why she started bashing her head against Bash, the rock. Because there's no. Why would she bash her head on the rock unless there's something in your head and so painful, so painful, or painful or doing she just something. wants to stop it, or she's just so hot. like it's maybe they're the just bash, so high. Mm. The bashing the head against the rock is the wild part. Hey, that's like that's such an extreme reaction. And but when how, she says blood's coming out of his eyes, maybe because he had his hands on his face, maybe he's just got you know. Yeah. Just but how crazy is it if there was if Valia wasn't the only survivor? You'd never know what happened there. No. And the fact that she so she didn't have the mushroom. No, she didn't eat the mushroom. That's got, well, I mean, that's got to be. Why it, was she right? naked and why was she covered in blood? Yeah, why was she covered? She in blood? wasn't naked, but oh. she was covered in blood from like she obviously uh, was trying to help her friends and would have been uh, covered in their yeah. blood. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought she was naked. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that image of like emerging from the woods. That's what a canoe guy stuff. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she bad. puts clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That's that was another, pretty I've, cool. I've, never, I've never, never heard of that before. That's cool, that one. And what we've learned from that is women shouldn't be allowed to lead hikes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't don't say you reckon, Josh? I didn't is that say something it. you would say? I'm just saying. I don't know. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I'm, but, uh, well, maybe, well, they would have been there to cook, so they shouldn't have gone wrong. Because they had women there, would the food would have been fine? <laughs> you started this. <laughs> I'm not actually sexist. I, I feel, just do no, it to stir you. I feel you. like though, when I say it, it's obviously a joke. And when you say, it, you're like, actually, <laughs> actually, now that you started, you gotta eat. I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna cook this. Maybe one of the guys cooked the mushroom. Who's gonna sweep out that tent? Yeah, that's what the problem is. Mm. Fucking stupid men. It, but technically, it's the woman's fault because she should have been cooking, and then that's. You know what I mean? Yeah. You shouldn't have left it up to the men. Shit, that's right. That and was a creepy one. That was good. I like that. Yeah, it's cool. All these people died. It was my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're long gone. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be, I'll be like, oh, there's this really awesome story and all these people died from this serial kill and people are like, are you mentally well? <laughs> but I'm okay. like, I always, I've thought of that before, but I'm okay with if I died in some sort of way like that or any sort of way people want to talk about it. I'm like, I'm gone. Really? You wouldn't care? No. What about your family? Like what happens if that happened to... That sounds like my family's problem. I said me personally. I didn't say on my family. So. Wait, <laughs> okay, good. you're alive. Yep. Someone else in your family dies, oh, okay. and then people talk about it. Yeah, like well, stories like that would be fine. Like, oh my god, he ate. Not like he's a piece of shit. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> no. Not like that. I feel like but stories. Are fine. I don't know if any of them were a piece of shit. It's not described. I don't know. I feel but weird about that when I personally know, like especially Catherine Knight, the lady who was really awful in a couple of towns over from us. You remember her? Yeah, the one that yeah. ate, ate up. Yeah, because yeah, she, Jordan and I worked with like someone who was involved in that mm. sort of thing and that made me feel super uncomfortable. It's like I would never talk about that knowing... Yeah, but oh, uncomfortable in that way. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I was just like, that's really weird. Yeah, but I meant pulling a story apart and sort of having half a joke about it. I'd be like, if that was me out there dying, I'd be like, go Do you think it's Get weird? Going... <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first, guys. If you have permission, don't you think it's weird though? It kind of I don't know how I feel about it. Like if people do, like death tours and stuff like that. Of oh, this is where that girl was murdered. And yeah, people, I like, find that interesting though. Like, I guess it is. In, it is interesting. 
but it's also weird at the is same time. Is it like time. disrespectful? Like that's what I mean. I don't oh, know. I could, Where's I don't the know. line? There's a lot. There'd probably be a line there somewhere. But I mean, I'd like to go to that place mm-hmm. and stand where they where it happened. Like yeah, you know, for him to say, "Here's where they camped. Here's where yeah. they walked. Here's where that's it started diff- on this yeah, path, and this is the rock she bashed her head." No, that's probably. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like I'd like to yeah. be well, there to see how where the two ran that way, the two ran down that way, and this is where these three died. Well, and, that's the guy who's written the book about the Jotlov Pass. He's actually in the book going on the expedition to reach yeah. what, what happened to these campers. Because you said yeah. the marker, they camped at a marker. That's different. It, that's that's, that's journalism. You so mean? you wouldn't know the exact spot though, would you? Because they camped at a marker then they tracked back down the mountain. For this story? Yeah. You would oh, have the search yeah, the search Yeah, the searchers would probably have a like report about where it was. We found the bodies in that. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I because I remember when I did, I did a Catherine Knight one back in the day when I did YouTube and I got death threats for that. Really? From her family. Oh, right. Really? Yeah. That's nice. Like, that's, At least you got some feedback. Like, that's my... I got... Excuse me. <laughs> my old YouTube channel has more subscribers than this one. I did hardly anything. Um, the, her family, that would be like, that's my auntie, bitch, you're going to die. I'm going to kill you and stuff. And I'm just like, you're probably like 12. Like, I don't even... I was like, guess, <laughs> can, guess what just, I can just do? Just hit the like button and subscribe. <laughs> 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 and then you can say whatever you want. Yeah, I just deleted it. But it's like, she was awful. And then the family's like, I'm going to kill you. And I was just like... Well, okay. <laughs> I guess we're dancing then, son. And guess what? I'm still alive today. So. Oh, shit, oh yeah, that's, that's a yeah. call out. Awesome. I win. But don't, for now. For now. <laughs> Please don't come after It's called me. winning, not one. <laughs> <laughs> I should be playing the long game, hey? You are. So far you're playing it well. Okay, Until well, then. Was this episode and we did it three weeks in a row. Yeah. Had a little bit of a hiccup there, but that was George's fault. After Pointing fingers again. Yeah. Here I'm we go. Pointing, I'm sorry, I've worked so long. That's angled to me a little bit, that pinky. <laughs> that's not a finger. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked so long in mining, I have no in, I have no need or motivation to solve the problem. I just want to find out who caused it. Yeah, and then report them drastically to drastically yeah. make a change. To <laughs> yeah, for this one little situation. Yeah. No, I want to argue for six months between us of who really caused the issue instead of actually addressing the issue. And I want to be as reactive as possible instead of proactive in every situation. That truck failed to give way and then they crashed in the other truck. Elbow pads for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to do something and we're running out of things. I'm thinking if we could develop like telepathy between us all. That would be really yeah. helpful. Okay, HR, get, get on to hiring some people to develop. No, we're not going to have anybody to do overtime to help fill mm. in the shifts. Mm. We're developing telepathy with our budget this year, lad. Yeah. <laughs> Just try really hard. <laughs> you shit yourself in the Yeah, that's right. Do so you have to fill a JSA about shitting yourself? One time, and then we have to get nappies for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> nappies, elbow pads. and <laughs> One time, one of the diggers had broken down like something had happened and they sent a bunch of plant mechanics, like the field crew, in to fix it. And he came back.